Hey everybody, Eric Schweitzer here for another TG Roundtable discussion. Joined today by the illustrious George Foster. Hello everyone, how are we doing? And the gamer's electrifying editor-in-chief, Stacey Henley. <laughs> Hello. A <laughs> uh, bit of business before we jump into the discourse. Uh, we are coming to your earballs and eye holes as usual on YouTube. But... We are also relaunching the Gamers podcast feed, so you can find this episode there. We're excited to be able to bring the show to more places, so check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, or else. Okay. Today, we are here to talk about the rumored, heavily rumored, new direction for xbox and its multi-platform future so to help us out with that george can you sort of walk us through the news over the last couple days of course so starting i believe it was in the middle of january when these rumors started swirling a bit um it was said that hi-fi rush one of the best games ever made if i do say so <laughs> uh that was coming to nintendo switch that's what the room started as and Considering Xbox has done this in the past with Cuphead, um, they've obviously worked with Rare for like Rare Replay and stuff. And we've seen, uh, I believe it's Ori, the first Ori, maybe the second one, come to the Switch. Like, it didn't seem too far fetched. Like, Hi Fi Rush, as amazing as it is, it's like a mid level exclusive for them, for Xbox, I mean. So, hearing that, I was like, yeah, that's probably happening. Cool. Um, and then it was like, oh, it's come to PlayStation as well. I was like, sick i'll replay it really good more people can play hi-fi rush i'm happy and then the rumor went even further it's like oh and sea of thieves i was like okay they're just they're just chucking everything out there like again sea of thieves a middle exclusive for them it makes sense to expand their player base for a you know sea of thieves been out for seven years something like that um so to introduce new players to it makes a lot of sense so these those two like, not the biggest rumors. Like, okay, fine, if that happens. Interesting, but it's not, like, that big a deal. And then yesterday, at 9 or 10 p.m. Uh, UK time, just sitting there, get notification, Starfield is coming to PlayStation. I was like, oh my god, okay. So, <laughs> this is really big news. And then the floodgates just flew open. So it was uh, Xbox era. They were the first one to report Starfield. They're like, right, this is happening. And then as soon as that was reported, every insider and leaker was like, yeah, I've heard this. Halo, probably. Maybe Gears of War. Maybe Forza. Maybe Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. And then where we stand now, um, Xbox hasn't commented on it yet, but it kind of just sounds like nothing is off the table. Like anything could now be on Switch or PlayStation like in the future. And <laughs> it is wild. Like... I, I I can't get my head around it. I don't know how you two are feeling about it, but whew. <laughs> <laughs> a very a very emotional uh, point of view. Yes, uh, as I always have on the rumor <laughs> mill. Okay, uh, so I, I think there there's a whole lot to break down here. We want to try to add as much nuance into the conversation as possible because obviously, uh, you know, the this would be a big paradigm shift for games it would be a big deal for microsoft if this is happening and then there's also like the drama console war aspect of it too um so yeah. i want to try to address this from every different angle because there's how, how what does this mean for players and video game customers what it, what is the business side of this what does this mean for developers so um Let's start. I, I guess the simplest one is when it comes to exclusives. Uh, the question is: Is this better or worse for the customer? Stacey, where where do you stand on that? Um, I think long term, this is probably better for the customer because I, exclusives are generally bad for the customer. It means you need to buy two machines instead of one to play one thing to play video games as a concept. You need the Nintendo console because they're going to have exclusives. You need the PlayStation console and you need the Xbox console. So I think a world without exclusives is probably better for the, the customer to just say, I'm going to buy a games console, which 
go to Target or wherever you go, get a games console that plays video games and you can play video games on them. So moving away from the exclusive model, I think is probably better for consumers in the long term. In the short term, I think we can sometimes dismiss the console war as kind of just gamer babies crying. And some of it is that. But if I think we're all quite lucky, we work in video games, we have access to different consoles, um, we can, you know, we kind of need them for our work, so they're a lot more accessible for us. If you had $500 and you decided two or three years ago that you were going to buy the Xbox console because you thought they had better games, you're now probably going to feel a little bit foolish because if you bought one console, because you basically went, this one has Starfield, this one has Spider-Man, I'm going to go for the Starfield one because I'm more interested in Starfield. If what happens is Starfield goes to the Spider-Man console, you have made the wrong choice because one console now has both games and the other one only has one. So I I think in the short term, it's probably going to sting for a lot of Xbox customers if this is what happens. If they do just throw everything on there, it does kind of feel like, well, waste me money buying this console because now we don't have access to all the games. Beforehand, I'd made a specific choice to have those games that are these games. Um, but long term, I, I think a world without exclusives is probably a better one. You know, we don't have that in other mediums really you don't really have very many artists to only release on spotify i know for a while there's been some licensing issues um or specific protests i know Joni mitchell isn't on spotify because she's protested against some of their policies but in general if you want to listen to music you have a music app or a record player and everything you want is on there if you want um to watch a movie, I know there's specific streaming services, but if you buy a DVD or you go to the cinema, everything's going to be there. There's no thing that only comes to like AMC theaters. Um, a book is an obvious example. So I think the fact that games have been so exclusive for so long is pretty unique to them. I would like to see it change, but I understand that it's going to hurt in the short term if it does. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. Like the when when it was just maybe Hi-Fi Rush is going multi-platform, it, it was a lot easier to be like, oh, what are you whining about? You're yes. you're mad that more yeah, people yeah. get to play games. The but game. in in the scenario where and and again, the, nothing has been announced. We know we don't know by Xbox. Of this. We this is all rumored. Um, but in the scenario where all future Xbox exclusives are just timed exclusives then you're absolutely right that the Xbox is just the machine that doesn't have God of War. Yeah. yeah. And the PlayStation has all the games. And especially in this day and age where games come out uh, busted and get better over time, it's almost like the Xbox is like the is where you play your early access games and then you yeah. wait for the gold edition and play it on PlayStation you know, and the in the current rumor is that uh, Indiana Jones will be timed for maybe a couple months, yeah, before it makes its way to PlayStation. So yeah, so it's very hard one to justify buying an Xbox, which is less of an issue than I already bought an Xbox and now I feel like I got the wrong console. And yeah. and and if this if that's what's happening, you absolutely did, and that's gonna affect whether you buy an Xbox next time, right? Mm. Um, so that, but that's like, that's all part of the, the shift. If there is indeed a shift happening, uh, a couple of, uh, I'll, I'll do the devil's advocate thing. Cause, uh, a couple other reasons that people are unhappy about this one is just the sort of platonic idea of competition and the idea of Sony getting too powerful within Right. the gaming market and what it will be able to do with pricing and with, you know, I don't think it, a very interesting swing given we've just had two years of the court saying Xbox is going to be too strong and too powerful and they'll right. control everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it will shock anyone if I say that uh, Sony is a very anti-consumer uh, operates their business in a very anti-consumer way. And so I totally 
um, can see the reservations about giving that company more power over the market. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so, there's just far too many moving pieces to consider here um, because this will would be such a tectonic shift. It's hard to wrap your head around, isn't it? Like, especially because it's still just a rumor right now. Like when they officially announce it, we'll have if they officially announce it, then we'll have more details on it and more specifics. Like Hi-Fi Rush is coming here, and then you know Starfield is maybe later that sort of thing. But like right yeah. now, there's so much to consider. Um, I've seen a lot of arguments along what you've said, Eric. Where it's like if Microsoft is no longer in the race, then Sony's going to stop trying. Like. There's no competition, so right. just like let up, like they'll stop caring about exclusives and stuff. And I, I don't know. I don't really think that's true. I think it's not like Nintendo's going away, especially. I yeah, yeah. I have some thoughts about that, but let me touch on the other, the Devil's other active. dissenting point yes. of view here. Uh, this Windows Central article everyone was talking about not too long ago uh, was making the point that this is. Uh, harmful to the resale value of Xbox games because now you've invested in this ecosystem and the, those games are now less valuable. And I find that personally the least compelling uh, of the arguments, though I can't deny that that is a definitely true. Yeah. It hasn't Game Pass yeah. kind of been doing that anyway? I, I just think the market's done that anyway. Like you can't resell games now, really. There's a there's a couple of game stores in the UK that don't take used games True. anymore. Mm. They they used to be, um, that was their point. That was the point. They obviously sold new games as well, but a lot of their business was from that sort of turnover back when it was a viable business option. Now they sell fungal pops. Yeah. So I I do want to. You know, cater to every viewpoint. I have my own views on it, both from a business side, from what I think makes sense as a journalist who follows the industry, and from what I think is a, you know, a player. I um had Xbox the 360 was probably the console that probably means the most to me across my life. It's probably the console that I fell in love with gaming with. Um, I'd had a PS1 and PS2, but I think that was the console I reconnected with. So I. I I want to see it from every viewpoint, but I just I'm just not sold on that argument. I just, I just think that's not a thing that matters, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, okay, so I want to talk about now whether this is a good or bad business move for Xbox. And th- for the rest of the conversation, let's just take for granted that this is something that's happening, so we can stop qualifying yes. that, that yeah, it's yeah. rumors, right? If we um, so, I think. A, a, a good place to start, an important place to start, is to recognize that the the council war, as we imagine it, this is not a battle between two video game companies. What what it is is a giant software company with a very small video game business, right? Versus a giant hardware company with a larger video game business, yes. and. And I think it's really important to not sort of be myopic about the game industry because the game industry is huge and these are the two biggest players in it. But what these companies are is so much more than a PlayStation and an Xbox. Um, and their relationship with each other is is a lot bigger than, than the number of console sales uh, that represents them. A, a Sony is worth... A hundred and thirty billion dollars. Okay, Microsoft is worth three trillion dollars. Like they are not playing the same game, and it's no. not that surprising that they have a very different approach to the future of the video game industry. Um, Microsoft is a three trillion dollar software company, so I think when we talk about oh what what a surprising thing or how how can it abandon the Xbox or whatever? Like, I think we should be thinking about how Microsoft is a software company that it doesn't make Windows computers, right? It makes yeah. Windows software and puts it on everyone else's computers. Like, yeah, that's, that's just true. a a proven model for one of the most one of the most successful companies of all time. It's just, at least in tech. So, you know, I. One, it's not that surprising, and two, it makes a lot of sense for 
what Microsoft does. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think the, you know, the surprise, the surprise part of me was more in terms of like the Xbox brand, I guess. And in terms of that viewpoint of it being like a console war, but in terms of like a business move, literally what I just said at the start, like it opens up their player base so much. Like suddenly you could have, you know, if if you view it like, say every Xbox player plays Halo, they don't, but let's say they do, then that is still limited. And you open that up, Halo comes PlayStation, you have a whole new player base of people buying into that game. Like in terms of, from a business side, it's it's a it's a smart move, especially with Microsoft focusing more on Game Pass than ever before, in terms of like letting everyone play. It's a smart move if you no longer care about selling Xboxes. Yeah, much. yeah. Which looking at their sales figures, they probably don't. It's not a it's not yeah. a money maker for them in the way that um, the Switch has been for Nintendo, for example. I don't know how right. much individual xboxes cost to make these days but i know when they were doing the the xbox can't call it the xbox one because it's a different console the original <laughs> xbox bill gates did a whole thing about how they they lost money on it they deliberately lost money on it because they wanted to enter into this market and they felt the best way to do that way back then was to have a box to have a console to say don't buy a playstation buy our xbox um so they were prepared to lose money on it they Surely can't still keep that strategy up into what is what their fifth, fourth, um, genre, uh, generation. Sorry, of consoles, they they can't surely still be on losses for it, but I can't imagine that. Um, given the size of their company, it's that much of a dent. You know, you talk about the the money that they make. It's it's like judging McDonald's by uh, how much its muffins make. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, and and also like so so the the sort of like social media narrative is that this this is Xbox has lost its way. What is it doing? Like it doesn't know uh, what the plan is, and the evidence for that is like why did it buy all of these um, publishers and studios? Why did it spend so much money acquiring? Yeah. Uh, Bethesda mm-hmm. and Activision, if if not for the sake of exclusives, is it really giving up on exclusives so quickly? And I think, I yes and no, right? Like, if Starfield had been the game everybody thought it was going to be, would yeah. would this be happening? I, I I don't know. I remember saying a while ago that if. If Starfield is good, none of Xbox's problems. And they did have problems at the time. This was when Retro was coming out, and all those sorts of um, issues with delays. Halo Infinite didn't do great. If Starfield is great, if it does, you know, Elden Ring sorts of numbers, then everything, at least in terms of public perception, which I don't know matters that much for business, but everything would have been fixed. What happens is Starfield released an OK game that was nominated for a grand total of one award at the Game Award, which had no shot of winning, um, and it's just kind of disappeared. Yeah, and yeah. that's that. It was an especially important game because Xbox has had such a dry spell. Yes, and yes. that that's understating it, right? Um, so had Xbox consistently been releasing hit games. No, I don't think I personally don't think this would be the direction that they're going. I think this is a consequence of losing the council war, but also at the same time, I think that there is Microsoft has always been very forward thinking when it comes to games. I think you can point to uh, Xbox Live and the rise of online gaming, like the, it was a leader in, in that space and e- yep. indie indie games with Xbox Live Arcade. And I think that it's easy to see that something really big is happening in the game industry and that, that there's there's a big constriction happening. I mean, we look at mass layoffs weekly, yeah, um, yep. um, more than one a week. Um, and I, it's, we also know that Sony spends more money on, uh, producing its AAA games than anyone else. Yep. 
hundreds of millions and the and those games aren't making a return we we have to keep selling new versions of the last of us to to pay for the last of us because it only sold 13 million copies in the first place you know like the amount of money that sony spends to make games is not uh panning out in crazy sales like Mm -hmm. the the game industry is bigger than ever but it's Fortnite, you know it's it's all these live service. It's not Uncharted and Last of Us and God of War. Those games are medium successes that cost more than everything else. Mm-hmm. And so it could be the case, and it seems to me that Microsoft is being very forward thinking here and going, "We, why do we want to fight a battle against Sony when they are taking themselves down to win? Yep. Yeah. Like that, what they want to do is make the best exclusives possible to sell as many PlayStation fives as possible. And that plan is leading to their own demise. So why would we try to do that better than them when like, it's not going to work for them. I think it's very clear that the future of PlayStation is, is probably not more God of war Ragnaroks. Yeah. Like it it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to spend six, seven years and hundreds of millions to make a game that doesn't sell that well. I, I think Xbox has always been very forward thinking in that regard to the point where they've sometimes been a little bit too early. I remember everyone laughing at the the Xbox One because it's an all-one entertainment system. What, so you're just going to watch television on your console and it has like these online connectivities and all these things to it. Obviously, the connect itself wasn't great, but now we have VR, so there's kind of been a, a circle back around to that. But there was so much that Xbox has always thought about, probably because it's not really a video game company, where it's decided this is where the future is going. We are going to prepare for it. Mm-hmm. And while they being too soon with the Kinect and the Xbox One and that whole thing set them back a lot, it could be that this is just a reaction to what's happening already because you think back a long, long time ago, before George was born, um, <laughs> to the PlayStation and the Nintendo, they were exclusives. They were bona fide. One of them came on a big block of plastic. The other one came on a disc. They were completely separate entities. Whereas now, we think of those PlayStation exclusives that you've reeled off. They're not really exclusive. The Last of Us is on PC. Horizon's on PC. God of War's on PC. Bloodborne's still not. But so many of these <laughs> games move to PC anyway. Um, Xbox, obviously, because it's got um, PC Game Pass, they've always had a pretty fluid definition of um, exclusivity in, in that sense. You think of Halo as being Xbox exclusive, but it's not. It's on PC. Um, so I think even though studios are built around exclusives, Xbox is probably sensing that. That's something that isn't really true anymore. Because yeah. the, that's something yeah. you said at the start about if you just want to get them later, just wait until they come out on PlayStation. You could do it now with a PlayStation, just wait until they come out on PC. They're going to be there. True. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I am hesitant to put, like, PC and console in the same market because yeah, they, I know what you mean. They, they yeah. have such a different purpose and install base. And um, I think that that also leads to the point that, like, the Xbox, the box isn't going anywhere. Yes. Um, Do you think they make new Xboxes? Yeah, I think they, yes, I think always. Uh, Maybe not until the end of time, of course. (laughs) uh, (laughs) Because because a $300 Xbox, it cannot be compared to a $1,000 PC that needs a new video card every two years, right? Yeah, and you can play it on your sofa and everything. I I know I made this point, but when I find out that a game is on PC or something else, I always dismiss PC immediately. So do I, I personally. I always prefer to play it on something else. But it it might be that Microsoft itself isn't as aware of that. I know Phil Spencer knows video games very well, and they've got a huge video game department. I don't want to understate how big the video game department is because they make three trillion a year but this is a company that as you say doesn't focus on video games entirely they might not be that inclined to think of a difference between a pc and a xbox you know we uh, there's still parents who could call everything a playstation oh, right we, older parents who call everything a nintendo like <laughs> I, I there's definitely some sense that um, 
a video game is a video game to some people, even some people in the industry. Just like, well, a game is a game, it doesn't matter where it is. It's, if we can make more money selling it here, then we should. There's no emotional connection, I suppose, is what I'm getting at. Mm. I, yeah, yeah, I think you're totally right. Uh, but I think that the there will continue to be an imp- imperative, if nothing else, for a Game Pass machine. Yes, yeah. yes, I think so. I, they, they are doing that room. It's, I think, a console leaked a while ago that is basically the equivalent of the Series X, but just digital. So, like, right. they clearly have plans moving forward for that. This whole thing seems, from the rumor mill, it seems suggested that it's like a recent change. Like it's been being talked about for a bit, but it is like a recent thing. So obviously they've probably fought that console long before they've considered this new direction. But I don't see Xbox as a console going. I I agree. I think the the Xbox branding will continue to be incredibly valuable and important. I mean, you're gonna see it when. Uh, when Hi-Fi Rush comes to PS5, you're going to see Xbox branding in yep. the PlayStation Store, right? Like, Yeah, 100%. And when you go to Target, Best Buy, Walmart, or whatever, like they still want Xboxes on the shelves. Even if they those are uh, cheaper machines that are less powerful, that are mostly for Game Pass. Like, I think it's okay if the PlayStation six is uh, just blows away the next Xbox in terms of like performance and capability, because Xbox can sell a cheaper machine, a smaller machine um, one that it's an easy add on or put it in your extra bedroom or whatever. You know, I I think that is going to continue to be um, a big, important part of the Xbox business, but, but, you know, just not on the, just not the way it was in the PS3 versus Xbox 360 era. No. Like it, yeah. It's not a it's not a head to head battle. And I think that's been clear since with the rise of Game Pass. I don't I don't think this should surprise anyone. Um I just honest to me Xbox's biggest problem is a like communication and optics problem. It's not uh we're we're all like reading pretty deeply into the business here and trying to make determinations whether they're doing good or bad business. But but to me, the, it's the way that they are telling us what their business direction is is the issue. Yeah, uh, well, that's what's us. that's what's got their customers so worried. And I also think that there's an element of reaping what you sow here because of the the stoking of the console war. A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. You mentioned before this idea that people are saying Xbox has lost its way. I uh, can you imagine ever like sitting with your friends and going. You know, I really think Pizza Hut's lost its way. <laughs> it's just not a thing I care about. You know, we, yeah. I've, I was photocopying something the other day. Whew, Xerox has really lost its way. Like, you know, I just, I just don't care enough about these businesses. And I know, I know, there's obviously that financial connection that I mentioned at the start. I said myself, I have a strong emotional feeling towards the 360 specifically, but I, I think. It's kind of okay for us. It's kind of our job to do this. But I think what you have is thousands upon thousands of people all discussing what moves should a $3 trillion tech company make in yeah. order to secure its future at making little green boxes. Like mm. we just, there's so many people who are so invested in the outcome of this, but the outcome that they want is Xbox wins. They are Team Xbox, so they want Xbox to win. They don't even necessarily want want what's best for Xbox or what's best for Microsoft. They want a piece of paper that says Xbox has won this one. Because Sony yeah. fans got that last gen, last gen. In PS4, era, they may as well have emailed or posted uh, every Sony fan a diploma saying, you guys won this round, well done. <laughs> and Xbox fans want that. They want a sense that, not just they've made the right choice because the games are, like, are coming out are good, but this idea that the console war, if it ends this way, has been won by Sony. And I think that's going to be a difficult thing for some people to take. They have yeah. participated in this idea of a war for a long time, it's not a real one, no one actually died, but they've participated in this idea, become very invested online, probably made lots of friends through it, through forums and Reddit and Discord and things like that. And then the, you know, the generals just waved a big white hanky and gone, nah, we're okay, we're done. Yeah. 
Give all guns to the other team. And to, <laughs> just to emphasize it, like the general being Xbox that recruited these soldiers for the console war. Like, yes, they weren't just making games and they, and they all these brave soldiers came to their defense. Like they have fostered this. A hundred, culture. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you then go, well, actually, we're not going to fight the war anymore. Y- yeah. All these people are going to feel kind of misled. They're going to feel let down by their side. Yeah. Um, these guns, why won't you keep fighting? Like, <laughs> yeah. Not to say that they're right. They know they all need to grow up and like get some real problems in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it is a direct consequence of Microsoft's marketing and the way that it has like fostered this, this console war. Um, so like, yeah, the, this is the, it's definitely the chickens coming home to roost. If their fans are mad at them, it is definitely their fault. I have yeah. to say, for me personally, it feels like such a strange time to do this because literally last month, Xbox had the strongest showing. Like, obviously, Starfield shit the bed a bit, but the developer direct they just did was fantastic. Like, that was really, like, for me anyway, like Indiana Jones looks great. Avowed looks yeah, great. Yeah, a, a they really, showed, really like, good show. And I think, I think yeah. I don't like, I'm kind of going by in the console war myself here, but I think they won over PlayStation State yeah, of Play. Yeah. I know PlayStation had Death Stranding, but I feel like Xbox has looked really ambitious, really bold, really interesting games there. Um, things looked positive going into the future. A lot mm-hmm. of 2024 release dates as well, which might get bumped, but for now it gives you a nice little warm, fuzzy feeling compared to Sony's in development. <laughs> slogan um so yeah i think it yeah. it feels like a surprise i think we felt we had it figured out i think we certainly i did uh, probably a little bit of arrogance because i've never ran a three trillion dollar company don't know how it works but just kind of felt like they've bought um bethesda they've obviously bought activision blizzard they've bought a couple of smaller studios as well and it felt like they'd gone right playstation won the last generation through exclusives so we are going to build up our army. Let's go full into the war metaphor. We're going to build up our army with more artillery so our exclusives are better. So yeah. I, I am, I'm sure there's a version of it that does make you know good business sense. And I, I know Activision Blizzard for $70 billion is eye-watering, as it sounds, pretty cheap considering the money it makes. It was you know sold under a bit of a scandal. Uh, so I... I can understand if you have that much money, why you would go and buy this company. But I think everyone just felt they were buying it to make exclusives. It was, you know, they're going to bring mm-hmm. back um, Spyro and Crash and Tony Hawk's, and they're going to have um, all these all these new mascots for for Xbox, and it's 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 going to show this like bright, brave new dawn for the console. And instead, it seems like they just want to sell it like software, which makes sense mm-hmm. for a software company. Oh. And the industry bled out six thousand people last year, and has already bled out another four thousand this year. Like that—that that is important too. It's kind mm-hmm. of important. I mean, it's very important that people lost the jobs, but they lost the jobs a lot of them because of slower growth. Like Xbox, sorry, Microsoft just did some layoffs themselves, and it does happen when you have an acquisition because there's two people doing the same job. But a lot of the layoffs that we've seen are. We projected an 8% growth and we only got a 5% growth. These aren't companies that are making huge losses. I know we've said PlayStation is spending a lot of money on um, producing AAA games. But when you look into the meat of a lot of the layoffs, other than the ones that are from studios where there's been a really big flop or, or failure, a lot of them are cutting for tax purposes in order to sustain a high level of profitability for shareholders as opposed to the bubble bursting. It's shoving people out of the bubble so there's more air for the richest people to breathe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. But the but the downstream from that is less f- hands and minds to make big, expensive games. But yes, yeah. Yeah. A scale back in ambitions. Right. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these companies can no longer invest the way that they have been over the last 10 years in games that take seven years and cost $300 million. It's just, it's not, that's not going to be the norm anymore is what I'm seeing. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. I think, I think um, that's very true. 
it's just one of those difficult things to kind of see the industry shift because we didn't make quite enough profit. Like I almost don't mind it when they say this isn't working. We need to do something desperately because everything's going to collapse. It's more that mm. this is this is working, but it could work a bit better. Seventy-seven people are out of a job. They're mm. just you know it's just not nice, basically. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of comparisons being drawn to Sega and the Dreamcast, and you know losing the console war against Nintendo, and then shifting yep. into publishing. Um, clearly, parallels to be drawn, but I I. It, that kind of really sells Microsoft short and its vision for the future. Cause once again, uh, a- Xbox leads change in the game industry. And I, and this isn't, this isn't a uh, Xbox falling back to publishing because like game pass really is such a game changer. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a new direction, for Xbox, if that's what's happening, uh, I don't think is quite analogous to uh, Sega giving up on consoles and spending yeah. the next 20 years making mediocre Sonic games. <laughs> <laughs> I think I suppose the difference there is, is, as well as all the things you've just said, Sega is a really big company, but doesn't quite have as many in different um, plates spinning as Xbox does, even ignoring the whole Microsoft side of things. Xbox right. has a lot of studios under its um, under its ownership, and then even within those studios, a lot of studios. Because we think of Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard King as being three studios, but it's not because Activision itself owns about twenty. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different people at Xbox that I think are already doing that. That I think for them to focus on doing it this way suggests a much broader change than we should go back to doing it this way, the way that Sega did. Sega really had put a lot of stock in. We think we can be the next big player in this market. Yeah. Um, I think Xbox has been in the game for a lot longer in terms of, you know, manufacturing consoles specifically than Sega ever was. And it's rightly or wrongly, if this is true, it, is I don't think it's a sign of being defeated or giving up. It's a sign of sensing that there is another way to win, if if you like. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, everybody's going to say, and I'm seeing everywhere how embarrassing this is, how how clueless uh, Microsoft is, and I think like what we've sort of drilled down to is it makes sense that people feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it, and it certainly doesn't mean that that is the case that Microsoft is lost and scrambling or anything like that, but it certainly looks that way. And there's a reason it looks that way. Right. Yeah. Like even I, like I, I understand both sides of it and I'm, <laughs> I, I don't care about the console wars. Like to me, like we, the three of us said, a game is a game, you know, regardless where it is. And maybe that's because we work in the industry, I guess, but I've never really cared about it. But even I yesterday had a feeling of why do I have an Xbox? You know, right. like I, I I felt a little bit, yeah. a little bit um, scorned, I guess. And I can definitely see if you if you're sitting there with your Xbox shirt and you're screaming every time Phil Spence comes on screen. I mean, get a life, like Eric said. But hmm. I can see why you would be upset. I can see why people are. I mean, yeah, people it's a... this. It, it does matter to yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same reason you should be upset that Starfield wasn't very good and Redfall wasn't very good. And it's been six years since there was a Gears of War and like all these things and Infinite uh, has taken yeah. four years to be OK. Yeah. You know, like like they, there are have a, a lot of mistakes have been made. I'm certainly not trying to excuse Xbox and be like, oh, you just don't see the master plan here. Like <laughs> there's clearly been. Uh, over a decade of missteps. Phil Spencer said himself on that podcast that like they lost the council war last generation. Like they did not bring the games uh, and they're still not bringing the games. Well, they are to other consoles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're bringing Starfield to other consoles. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I do. I do think um, this doesn't mean anything either way. Um, and the, you know a message could be imminent, but 
it broke on Sunday night. They probably weren't expecting it, but it's now Monday. We've had this time. They haven't said anything. Yeah. Um, and I know yeah. it's a really complicated issue. And if it's even a little bit true, you can't say it's not true because then you're going to have to reveal it eventually. And even if it's not true, you can't necessarily say that's not true because that might be a, a you know, a plan C or a plan D for the future. And you don't want to say we're not doing this because then that makes a rod for your own back when you do it, even if you don't do it for another six years. Yeah. Um, but it does feel like no message at all. Not only is this completely caught Xbox out, but whatever stage they're at with this plan, they have no idea how to tell people about it. They yeah. just have yeah. no sense of what this looks like to the public. Deafening silence right now. Like I keep right. expecting any kind of announcement, any kind of we will talk about these plans. Well, so... when the Xbox leaked, obviously the the um, Series X leaked. They handled that really well, not they just did. with like the meme that they posted about it, but they really embraced this idea that players are interested in what we're doing and we're really glad and we just want to show you like in our own way, we'll be ready very soon. We do have a new console coming out, you know. Um they really embraced this idea that probably stoked in the console wars a little bit, but they really embraced this idea that people wanted to see behind the scenes. They took it as a compliment that people were trying to leak their big trade secrets, basically. <laughs> at least they spun it that way as far as the public went. Um, but with this one, it just feels like they've been so caught out. Whether it's yeah. true or not, they how don't do know how to. Well? They don't know how to tell anyone about this. Yeah. Well, and another thing that we have to touch on is through the entire, um, all the Activision drama between Sony and Microsoft was was it not the case that? Uh, Call of Duty exclusivity was a huge sticking point. Yep. Yeah. So uh, clearly, exclusivity is very important to Microsoft, or it was four months ago. I would argue clearly it's very important to Sony. Assuming, let's say you know you're planning on abandoning exclusivity, your Xbox, you know you're planning on abandoning this. And Sony says, I want to take you through a very long and very expensive legal battle that you'll probably win anyway to make you give up the exclusivity on this game. And if you lose, well, you're going to do it anyway. Mm. Uh, and the result of that case was, we know how much Horizon cost. We know how much Uncharted cost. We've seen private emails from Jim Ryan disparaging Xbox and Xbox players and the Xbox ecosystem. Micro even regardless of the fact that they won the case, Microsoft came out of that looking a lot better. Yeah, Sony sued them in a case they didn't think they'd be able to win, and Xbox might not have cared if they lost. Yeah, a, a, a bit of 4D chess to that whole scenario, absolutely. Um, yeah, but but that just also just goes back to like the optics of this whole thing. Oh, and, yeah, how, yeah. and how that's really what their big issue is at the moment. Yeah, if what I've just said is true, Xbox can't say that to players. They no, can't say to their fans, well, yeah. like, we wanted to be sued. We, we, yeah. wanted to give up, we wanted to give up Koji anyway. We don't care. So if if we're in the mindset that the Activision Blizzard thing was for exclusives four months ago, and it was right with building up an army that can take on the console wars, then now that that's not the case, why do we think that was done then? Um, I have quite a controversial answer to that. Um because if, if this really is a really recent decision, it could be as recent as the Insomniac leaks. We didn't really know what Sony's plans were with anything. We knew some of the games cost a lot of money, but when the Insomniac leaks happened, not only did we see the development sales, we saw how much they'd spent on a game like Spider-Man, which uses the same map and the same characters. We saw they'd tried to make several live service games. They've just canned The Last of Us, got rid of a Spider-Man one. Um, they've got a, had a Horizon 1 development for ages that we might never see. So they've seen... Sony try to look at the future and go, I think it's like 95% of studios have a, a live service in development. I saw yeah, recently there was like a, a, a poll from, I think it was GDC. Um, so Xbox might have seen the future that's had and think, we don't want to invest in that. We don't want to pay for several billion dollars worth when you add them all up, live service games that we don't think will stick the landing because we tried it with Halo. If we couldn't make Halo work... Right, we yeah. can't make anything else work. Um, so it might have been a reaction to some of the recent Sony leaks and some of the Sony shifts in strategy. Sony obviously moving away from this ten live service thing they planned into 
okay, that's not the future. Maybe this is the future for us. Yeah, that's that's all that's... I'm supposed to guess. Yeah, I think that's because I, I I couldn't make heads or tails of it. It did feel like not wasted time, but it feels like there were so many conversations about, oh my god, this means Crash can be on Xbox. This means get our heroes back, and there's so many conversations about that that took up so much time over last year, and now it sort of feels like obviously it wasn't for nothing, but I can't get my head around what that means now if this is true. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as we start to wrap up, what are wh- where do you hope this leads? Hi-Fi Rush on PlayStation, maybe? <laughs> You've already played Hi-Fi Rush, so why would you care? I will play it again. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, Hi-Fi Rush, love aside. Yeah, I'm... For, for me, selfishly, I'm excited. I, I use my PlayStation more. If you tell me I can play Halo on PlayStation, I'll play more Halo. I'll play Sea of Thieves. I'll play those games on like my personal console of choice, but I would be, I would be happy if this would be, could be the beginning of the end of exclusives as a topic of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be pretty cool if we could shift the conversation away from the console war and who's winning and who's losing and every single state of play and game awards has to be this PlayStation versus Xbox thing. I think it would be mm-hmm. pretty cool if we could start talking about games in a different way because of this. Yeah, I yeah. see that. I think that's hopeful. I, I think there's so many people, even if this console war crap has come to an end with this with this new move, I still think people are still going to be thinking like that. Um, yeah. So I think that's hopeful. I'd, I'd love that. I'd love to put more focus on games instead of who wins every time that we have a presentation. I don't think it will happen because there are those people with the Xbox tattoos and the PlayStation tattoos. They're going to be like, we won, we lost, whatever. But we can hope, right? That that would be very cool. It's just so detrimental to conversation. It's yeah. just so, it's just so unbelievably toxic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that, gamers will find new ways to be toxic to each other. I don't think this is going to heal the world or anything, (laughs) but if it could just take that element out of the conversation, I think that would be uh, in everyone's best interest. Yeah. I think I feel the the way I said at the start, I think for the consumers long-term getting rid of exclusives is the best way to go. I know it'll um, be rough in the, in the short term for people who've been on team Xbox if you like, but having Xbox as a Game Pass machine, it's an affordable way to get into gaming, something that we badly lack as an industry, and how mm-hmm. much the new consoles are. Have PlayStation be, um, or have Xbox rather be uh, half the price of a PlayStation. Um, nice, easy entry level into play some stuff on Game Pass, play some Microsoft games. PlayStation is for some of the bigger exclusive games. And also, if it does make PlayStation a little bit less ambitious, I'm fine with that because you look at how many gaps we have between series now. I I, I know game won't ever go back to this, but I remember when I was a kid, there was like every year there was a new Crash Bandicoot, a new Spyro, a new Tomb Raider. It just felt like there was so many like fresh ideas in the industry. And um, Whereas now, every series, unless it's, you know, a Call of Duty it's waiting five or six years between games because they have to cost hundreds of million and take hundreds of hours. And if if Xbox kind of ducking out of the game means PlayStation can ease up a little bit and we can get more things more often that cost a bit less, and maybe it's on quite as cutting edge as The Last of Us Part Two. I don't really care. I would prefer that. I think that makes for a more interesting and alive industry. And it's what yep. the industry needs as well from everything we're seeing from layoffs and the insomniac leaks that we've talked about. Yes. We need that. Like if, if the industry is going to, I, I'm not going to say if the industry needs to survive, but for it to thrive and it, for it to grow, that is the way. If you think of some of the games that have spent eight years in development, um, and I know some of them like Red Dead are kind of worth it, but a lot of them aren't, right? If you take the money that that development um, cost and instead, for the same budget, released three smaller, shorter, worse looking games. I think most people would be happier with that outcome. I think it would make more profit. It would lead to fewer layoffs. It would mean more fresh ideas. It would mean more innovation in the industry because we'd see more things come out more often. And I don't think people are that connected 
to 100 hour long behemoths that look photorealistic. I think they're connected to experiences. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to see a shift back to the norm being smaller development cycles, smaller teams focus on um, what can we create with this scope as opposed to how much scope do we need to beat the other team? Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, that's it for this video slash podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Our article on Xbox and the future of gaming is linked down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and visit us at thegamer.com. That's the gamer. No space.